Greetings, hello, and welcome, everyone. Welcome to Dev Chatter. My name is Brendan. This channel here is Dev Chatter, and uh, today we're going to be writing a little bit of uh, probably C sharp and JavaScript. We'll see. Uh, we'll see exactly what we dive into. To start things off, we do have a. Uh, are you freaking kidding me? What is wrong? I you know sometimes I just really really dislike Twitch. It refuses to to un unhost. Their uh, their auto hosting just does not turn off, which is quite irritating sometimes. Anyway, um, I wanted to go ahead and get us started here, and uh, hopefully hopefully that stops auto hosting other people. Because even on like my computer, despite having loaded after I went live. It still wants to switch to who I was auto-hosting before. Alright, so, uh, let's get the bot out of the way. Everything is running. Uh, I will do a little bit of an intro to tell you all a little bit about our stream here. So, first off, I mentioned I'm Brendan, this channel's Dev Chatter. Um, we are a live stream that does primarily coding. We've done uh, some discussions, a little bit of design, some game development. Uh, we've interviewed some people to ask questions and things like that. Most of what we work here, work on here on the stream are open source projects. Those are all found out on GitHub at github.com slash devchatter. Links, of course, in the chat and down below. If you click that link, it will take you out to this page right here. The project that we have been working on, which I'm going to go ahead and toss into the, uh, into the, the section current project header right there. There we go. That's the project we've been working on. Uh, and this project is our dev streams project. So it is a community site that we are building and I will put it live so that we can see it while I talk about it. The way the site works is it's designed to be a place where streamers can go ahead and post their schedules and other stuff like that. We want to eventually put more information on there, but we're starting out with like details about your stream and your schedule and things like that. So you can tell other people, hey, here's what I do, here's who I am, here's why you want to watch my stream. So right now, if we go to this website, uh, it will go ahead and load up with just the, the four example channels that I have loaded in here right now. And you can see that we've got uh, Dev Chatter listed in here doing C Sharp and JavaScript. Uh, and we've got Gareth's down here uh, doing C++ and F Sharp. Sadly, that order is not controlled by us right here. Uh, I was just kind of loading them in there. Hey, Simon, greetings, welcome. And the... Uh, idea here is that uh, I can go ahead and look at one of these I can see what are their streams coming up what's their regular schedule during the week so you know if I want to see when's the next stream okay well there's one going right now so that one doesn't count uh, but it does say that it is live right now uh, the next stream is going to be on Monday and interestingly we could pull this as after with an end time after now instead of a start time after now and then we'd actually get that further out hey the michael jolly welcome greetings uh, and anyone else that's in chat and not and uh you don't want to speak up that's totally cool you are absolutely allowed to lurk in here if you don't want to chime in or get called out on stream just don't type anything hey coded beard welcome uh and uh i will and if you do if you if you just chime in to answer a question at some point and uh you know if i do call you out just don't chime in with anything else, and and uh, I will leave you alone. <laughs> we we don't we don't want people to be uh, pressured. Yeah, exactly. No, the Michael Jolly's right. So like, there's always a positive thing when we're calling you out on stream. Uh, very well, very well done, uh, Desert Griffin. That's exactly how you get called out on stream. Okay, so the other things that we're working on, uh, related to this, we want to have a calendar so you can kind of look into the future and see what streams are going when. So maybe I'm looking at starting up a stream. And I want to see, okay, well, I live in the United States, and my time zone is Eastern Time, New York, and I'm thinking about streaming on, say, Wednesdays might be what I'm doing. And so I look, and I, you know, maybe I restrict it down to just C-sharp, for example, and I say, oh, there aren't any streams, or very few, or I can see what other streams are going to take place on that day. Uh, hey, Carrie, you made it! Uh, greetings, and uh, <laughs> thank you for the uh, 202 biddies. Oh, that was just enough to jump ahead of S&B. Okay, I understand 202 now. Uh, that, that gets you your gold badge. Congratulations and welcome. And uh, I would like to formally apologize uh, to you for my failures on Twitter. Uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> 
Desert Griffin, congratulations uh, on uh, being uh, the recipient of a gifted Tier 1 sub from the Michael Jolly. And uh, thank you, Michael Jolly, for uh, gifting that sub. Desert Griffin, please be sure to enjoy your Chattasaurus emotes that you have uh, access to now all over Twitch. And your uh, Chattasaurus egg there. Uh, <laughs> and the fight has broken out between Michael Jolly and Carrie. Uh, and Will Bennett is hiding in a fetal position, but I'm going to call him out anyway. Uh, because that's that's the way we are here with uh, Will. <laughs> well, we could sit here a while on those. Okay, so anyway, the point being that when we look at this, you'll see that uh, on that date, there are not any uh, C-sharp tagged events on Wednesday. But if we look on Tuesday, you'll see that we do have dev chatter. Uh, if we shift this to Monday, you'll see it as well. So... Dev Chatter streaming Monday until Monday at that time. Which we really should hide that if it's the same one. But I won't worry too much about it because it, it at least is readable. So we want this data to display a little bit nicer and uh... <laughs> I love how there's a bitty fight. Uh... Does that round it out to something? Oh. You, you off by one. That's not a round number. That's not divisible. By, well, I guess it's an even number. It's not, it's not divisible by five, which we use base 10 numbering systems. So divisible by five would be way better. I'm, this is terrible. I don't know what to do. 344, that is such a weird number. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, this is what we were setting up here. Uh, we received a pull request. Uh, that came in from SNB, uh, who streams as Codebase Alpha here. Uh, SNB is actually one of our moderators here in the chat, so you'll frequently see him uh, lurking around in here either as uh, uh, yes, fuel snable. Roundness of number does depend on the base. Uh, like a round number in base two is very different from from a uh, and it, and I, I guess even in base ten, it's not really that round of a number. It's just kind of close. Uh, let me see, mod, um, code base alpha. There we go. Uh, so, as I mentioned, SNB is one of our uh, moderators here and sent us this nice pull request. So, SNB is working on a, uh, I guess, a side feature of this project. Uh, he is doing an Alexa skill which I probably should not have even said that word, so I apologize to anybody if I did just activate one of your devices. Um, but he's working on a skill for, for those uh, devices in order to make them uh, respond to questions about live streams. So essentially, so you could ask your device when the next coding live stream is uh, from some, some channel. So if you wanted to say, hey, when's the next dev chatter stream? that would be a uh, question that you could ask it. And so as part of that, uh, he wanted to set up a... Uh, so first off, he set up our GraphQL endpoint with uh, a couple of new calls. So live channels, which will uh, specifically just get data about which channels are live. And we've already written that into our system. This is just a way to put it in the GraphQL endpoint because we originally wrote it for our REST endpoint. So this is a little bit different, so we'll take a look at how that works. Uh, and I'm going to pull in his code so we can watch his version instead of the one I started up a minute ago to show you. And then the other thing he added is this channel sound X uh, endpoint. So, for example, uh, he put a nice picture in here. If you were... So if it heard deaf chatter... Ch chater, uh, that is an awesome spelling of that. So basically, if it gets typoed versions... Uh, it will still try to find the correct one. So if you speak a name of a stream and it's not quite right, uh, so for, you know, Deaf Chatter, for example, or or Deaf Cheddar, maybe it heard Deaf Cheddar. We should find out if it can do that. That'd be a good one to check. Uh, but let's pull in the pull request real fast. Uh, speaking of which, since I've got uh, uh, Carrie here, uh, I'm assuming you're gonna be at Stir Trek, right? And uh, I don't know, is anyone else in the chat gonna be at Stir Trek? If you are, let me know. I'm trying to get people together for that uh, at that event. Uh, specifically, uh, yes, Will, it is Dev Cheater because all of my bots' games are rigged. Uh, actually, none of them are rigged. I really should have rigged some of them. That would have been smart. Uh, let's check out the pull request. So we're gonna hop on over here. 
that's gonna fetch to the pull request so this is actually part of the reason why I use uh, github desktop is because how of how nice it is to switch over to a pull request while I'm live on stream to take a look at uh, one of those so that we can review it so I already looked at the code so uh, we're gonna check out how it how well it works though so let's start it up uh, if you code fast a dev cheetah you know Carrie just because you're an organizer doesn't mean you can make ev <laughs> make the event a lot of people uh, get you know end up with a scheduling conflict outside of their control I usually assume you'll be there but uh, you never know for certain I know Steve has missed one uh, and and he's on the board so it happens uh, so this should be the new one so we're running GraphQL with uh, we have the UI playground set up, so that actually lets us just run stuff. So this is kind of like having Postman built right into our application so we can test out our API. It's really cool. So first off, I'm going to run that, and that works fine. Let's take a look at uh, this one. Uh, so here's the query we want to adjust to. So we're going to do this as... Uh, we're not going to call it query. We're going to call this uh, Houndex query. Oh, whoops. Right. Query. It's Soundex query here, Brendan. Uh, Soundex query. And then inside of this, we want to pass in what the name is that we're going to try sending in. So uh, Will Bennett suggested Dev Cheater. So we're going to do that one because uh, that sounds good. Uh, we want to pull back the name. Uh, I don't care about those values, so we'll pull back name, schedule. And here's the power of GraphQL. Notice as the client, I'm specifying which values I actually want you to send me. So if I don't want you to, like if I only want these ones, this is what I'm going to get. And so that asks for local start time and local end time. Uh, I want to see, yeah, uh, so this I think is only going to have these values. So we're going to say local start time. Maybe I don't care when they end. So let's try calling this. Now I need to add variables or this isn't going to work. Uh, so because we specified, oh no, I, I hard coded it. Never mind, we'll be good. Uh, but we could have passed it in. Cannot query field soundex on type dev streams query. Oh, right. Channel soundex. I actually have to match the one there. Uh, so channel soundex is this one. So we have uh, dev chatter is what it came up with. Um, and if we have uh, def chatter, can we get it? Hey, we still get it with def cheddar. Uh, and what about uh, if I just search for Brendan? Hey, it guessed Brendonius. Uh, so it looks like it can it can sort of figure these out with like it's it's wiggling them to get kind of close on it. So if we actually take a look at the query that it's running in order to make this work, uh, I will bring up the code for that. It's not here, Brendan. It's down here. Um, why didn't that open when I clicked it? So right here, channel sound X. Right there, string graph type uh, query argument. So it takes in a non-null uh, string element, basically. And that argument is named a name. And we pull the name out of the argument set and we apply it to our channel search service get channel sound X. So this is a new function that was written by SNB. Uh, hey SNB, welcome. Um, hang on, let's see what, uh, so Carrie, you'll be doing the food drive. Uh, I'm not surprised you do the food drive every year. Uh, take care Carrie, have a good one. All right, so this is what it's doing. Let's get rid of that. So get channel sound X. Uh, standardized channel name and select star from channel where soundx name equals soundx standardized channel name order by difference 
So essentially what it's going to do is it's going to um, pull back all the data based on this query based on and it's going to be ordered by how much it seems to match the um, result that we're looking for. Now what I'm wondering on this, and I'm actually not sure on this, how much data gets pulled back by this? Because since we're always just taking the first, I'm wondering if we don't want to adjust this to just do like a top one. Uh, just to make sure that we don't actually pull any extra out of the database. Might be the only thing I would suggest on that one as I read that. Uh, also, um, there's uh, there's one thing. I, I just went to grab my drink. Uh, and um, I, I realized I, I'm going to try a new drink on, literally on stream. I haven't tried this yet. Uh, Coca-Cola made something mildly interesting. Uh, they made this like... I don't know how well you guys can read that because it's trying to chroma key the can a little bit there. Uh, but this is apparently orange vanilla Coke Zero. So see? Orange. Which is just strange. Oh my god. It's like... That's, that's really, really good. Like... Holy crap, that's good. <laughs> that's like uh what are they called uh they're the uh the uh, it's like it it tastes like one of these it it seriously is like eating one of it tastes exactly like this so i don't know if you guys have ever had one of those things but holy crap that's really good <laughs> Yeah, no, don't worry, uh, don't worry, Andy, Andy, uh, it's, it's fine, it's fine, I still, I still have Pepsi, so it's just, I was gonna try this one, because they started selling that, so, uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know why they started making it, but it, hey, it's, it's, whoever had that idea, it's kind of, a, kind of a good one, actually. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry, um, the Pe Pepsi Coke, uh, I usually buy whichever one's cheaper, although I uh, I do prefer Pepsi, but if you prefer Coke, that's fine too. We can all get along here. Alright, um, and uh, SNB, I am just going to just make that change and just commit it myself, uh, just the select top one on that, since we were just always doing a, uh, a first or default, which actually, now that I think about it, um, since we put top one, I kind of want to change this to a single or default then. Uh, because this case, um, if we ever get to this point again in the future, seeing a single or default, we are unlikely to forget that we did this. So when it was a first, you might remove that and think, hey, I'm going to get all the results now. But the fact that this says single, if you remove a single, you know your previous query was limiting to only one value. So, this is a little bit safer because you're a little bit more clear about what's going on, despite the fact that a single and a first effectively do the same thing. So, just a pro tip there for people, if you do know your result is a single, put in single instead of first. <laughs> it will it will save you someday. Uh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Alright, let's, uh, let's take a look. So, we're, uh, so that's really just a... Uh, and reorganize the usings which I won't worry about having that in this commit uh, but I will have them flip on that uh, let's see um, limit the sound x sequel query to top uh, I'm gonna say top one and I wrote it as top in caps because that is a a uh, normal casing that I think most people are going to understand that I meant top as in like a SQL top, not a client side. So it's kind of extra information I can put in there just with the casing I use. Uh, Simon, someone off topic, any thoughts on the Blazor officially becoming a thing? Uh, Simon, I'm thrilled that it's a thing because I'm much more willing to go and try it and use it for stuff now that it's an actual thing. Uh, so really, really glad they did that. Uh, Dungeon Smasher, uh, a single, uh, Fuel Snable's correct, a single will throw an exception if there is more than one. 
Uh, whereas first, it doesn't care whether there was one or more. So single is going to just force it to do that. Um, yeah, Andy, isn't that cool? Uh, so be, be sure to thank SNB for uh, putting that in here, because uh, that gave us a chance to talk about it, too. And uh, welcome, Crimson Green. I don't know if you saw uh, my tweeter stuff. I didn't tag you on it. Um, but I was talking with people about uh, the the Trek of Stirs. <clears throat> We're going to try to get uh, people together uh, at, uh, at Stir Trek, at least for a, a picture, um, uh, some kind of a photo, at least of, of the, the guests. We'll probably bring in Crimson Green as one of our channel moderators. Uh, and any other dev chatter people that are there, guests or anything like that, hoping to, uh, the guests or just viewers, if you, if you are going to be in attendance, uh, then uh, we hope to see you there. Sorry for that. That is finding channels where IDs in that. Um, so that's where did IDs come from? Uh, let's get some. What is this one? Oh no. Uh, what is? Did I just get all of them? All the tags. I'm going to need to reread that at some point. That is unrelated to this pull request. Sorry about that, everyone. There's something wrong with that code. Um, that 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 code scares me a little bit. We we did some like we must have left something temporarily somewhere because that doesn't look right. <laughs> There's definitely something wrong with that code. Uh, I'm going to push up this change so that we have that up there. Hey, Link Slumps, welcome. We don't have an SNB command. Why don't we have an SNB command? Um. All right. Uh, CMD add um. SNB. Uh. Uh. Let's see. Um. There, uh, we added an SNB command. Uh, in my local version, the Twitch tag is always null. What calls that? The twin. Uh... Hey, Draco, welcome. Um... Andy from Lithuania. Yes, I agree. Uh, it should be taking advantage of the database more uh, unless things are cached, at which point uh, it could avoid that. So essentially what we need to do is we need to check the cache initially to see which data we need to fetch from the database is the way it should work, but that's not how it's working. Um, uh, let's see... Uh, yeah, so sorry, Fuel Snable. It won't work just yet. Um, oh yeah, yeah. There could be a there could be a B pun for S and B. Um, that that absolutely would would also have worked. Uh, I went with his love of space. Uh, I figured that was a good choice. Uh, but either way, so the the changes that he made was setting that method up on the uh, interface here. Uh, adding the method that we were looking at, and this method looks fine, it's the other one that seems to have the problem. And then down here, in the GraphQL, uh, we added in a, uh, a field for the Twitch stream service, which gets called when you call get live Twitch channels. Oh, that's the other one, let's try it real fast. Uh, so let's do the other one. Where is the other one? Uh, hang on. Pull that up, put that over here. Call the other one. Let's see, live channels. And name, that works. And schedule, that works. Cool. So live channels right now include dev chatter. Uh, and that's actually the schedule of dev chatter, which that doesn't make sense. Uh, we don't, why would we want to see the, the schedule of a live channel? 
Uh, day of week. <laughs> yeah, no, I got that. It was just funny because I because I had put up the query and it didn't make sense to me. Uh, I I'm aware that I wrote the query there, S and B. Uh, I was more commenting on the, own, the the absurdity of my own test query there. It didn't make sense. But either way, uh, looks good. Definitely seems to be working. Uh, I like the way the code's written. And I'm going to go ahead and let this one merge in. So, confirm. Uh, we are, Wait, hang on. Let's just confirm. Uh, we're going into dev from there. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Confirm the merge. Uh, S&B, feel free to delete your branch now. Uh, it is, it is in. Hype, hype. Uh, are you using secrets? Uh, Link Slump, yes, we are using user secrets in this project. Um, shouldn't caching be a transparent pipe in front of the... Uh, Simon, yes, you are correct. Simon, if you take a look at how we do caching in this project, it will make more sense. And it's actually not done within the data access layer. Uh, so that is actually why the, what you're suggesting is exactly how we do it. It does not actually go in the method we're talking about, but that does mean that we need to adjust how that method works. Uh, so first off, that method should be adjusted so that it pulls back the data all in one go instead of the separate calls. Uh, now that I will allow that to be a single call that pulls out multiple data sets separately rather than merging them into one object uh, because that uh, can help sometimes with the simplicity of the call and, and the pulled data. Uh, but yes, you are correct. The, the caching will go in a separate layer. We actually use the decorator pattern uh, so that callers of that object don't even have any idea that they're even using a cached version versus a regular version. So most users will not even understand that caching is going on. Uh, Ancient Coder, hello, welcome. Uh, greetings. Uh, do you have a command that shows the amount of hours you have watched Draco? No, I don't. Uh, so um, we, well, we, so I think I might track that maybe. I don't remember if I do or not. Um, if we did, we would have written that really early on in the creation of the bot, uh, that there would be tracking on that, but I can't remember if it's in there or not. Um, short answer is that's actually hard to calculate because Twitch doesn't really give us that information. Um, we just have to keep track of how long the bot's been running and you've been in here. Uh, so that's really, really the answer. So if the bot was not running on some stream and you were here, you wouldn't have gotten time counted because that's really how it figures that out um, uh, link slumps you can kind of identify it from points but there are alternate ways of getting points yes um, yes lovely weather today hopefully uh, people are able to watch the stream outside if they so desire uh, let's switch over to our dev branch as we just got that merged in uh, so Simon brought up a, uh, a fun thing, so let's talk a little bit about caching, because why not? It needs to get it needs to get written at some point anyway. So let's take a look. What do we got? We were taking a look at um... ah nice. Uh, yeah, our uh, our weather's actually cold right now, so it's been cold and rainy, so not fun. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna warm up in the in this coming week though, so that'll be nice. Um, we want to take a look at the call that this made. Uh, in here, it called get channel sound deck. So we're gonna take a look at this code. And here's where it happens. So this is an actual inside the Dapper project class. Uh, so let's add in a bit of caching to this. So here's how we're going to do it. So we're going to make a cached channel search service, which yes, I'm aware the name gets a little long. So there's our channel search service. We're going to implement the members. Uh, whoa, 
Dev Chatter made it on the list again. Hang on, everyone. Uh, help tax. Uh, tax Dev Chatter. It's time for Dev Chatter to pay his taxes. Uh, don't worry, the Michael Jolly. Luckily, we have taxes implemented here. So, uh, if anything ever gets rigged and Dev Chatter takes over uh, at, on, on that list. So, we, we wrote some things. Uh, I believe that looks for known bots and tries not to give any, uh, uh, any of our channel tokens, our, our coins, to the known bots. So, things like the... Uh, stay hydrated bot for example doesn't get any but uh, we we implemented taxes we figured that's the best way to remove uh, <laughs> remove tokens <laughs> Michael Jolly's not claiming everything's rigged too yeah everything's rigged here on this channel all right uh, next thing so the cached one here's the way that this works so this is called the decorator pattern if anyone's not familiar with this the way that the decorator pattern basically works is you have layers of things that are all implementing the same interface so you as the caller are depending on an interface so the code that calls this calls this uh, interface so if we look channel search service is an I channel search service object so it is this interface. It happens that both our Dapper implementation and our cached uh, implementation both implement this same interface. So a caller could receive either one of these and not know how it works. Since we don't want our cached version to actually know about the database or how it works, the way that we get around this is we tell it that it is actually going to receive uh, its own search service so it gets the real one and so this is actually how decorator pattern works uh, it's the idea that this one has now decorated another one so you kind of layer the pieces uh, you can do this same thing so caching works well with this uh, some other systems uh, they'll they'll apply logging this way so you can tell when a method is accessed if you do need logging at that level uh, that is one of the ways to implement it there are other ways of, as well of course other aspect oriented programming ways mostly uh, but this is one object oriented way of doing it so we pull this object this search service here and this is going to be our dapper one internally and we're going to tell our IOC container to give us the correct one yes I see you all in chat but first, to make this actually work, we're going to do this. So once I say that, get get channel sound next and standardized channel name. Boom. Okay. Now the decorator is done. This is complete. I can put this somewhere. I can have the system actually use the cached version and everything will work just fine. Now, all we've done at this point is just added an extra layer of indirection. So we've essentially created a seam for our caching, though the caching is not implemented yet. Uh, it is this that allows us to cache and put in caching logic because this is now where caching logic lives. So we have said, caching logic is not going to go in here and muddy this code up and it's not going to go at the level that this gets called from either because we want to sort of hide that away and keep that separate and this is the way we're going to do it uh what is this uh crimson green you're back in the top five nice um we oh link slumps you just did this in school that's awesome uh coated beard how far uh coated beard is uh is pretty far up there uh, Janiscu's not far behind, neither is SNB. So, uh, we, we do have some people with a reasonable number of tokens in here. Uh, logging equals an audit trail? Um, kinda link slumps. It's, uh, it, it, it depends on exactly what you're doing with it, but yes, I generally will help you tell what was going on, how the code was called. Um, yeah, see, his assignment says not always, it, it can. Uh, it just depends on what you're building and why, and what, what you're logging and, and, and different things like that. So uh, if you're not logging at a really low level of all the individual calls, it doesn't really cover that. Um, uh, yeah, so generally speaking, there are frameworks that can handle that kind of level of uh, auditing their link slumps.
Mmm, that's delicious. Well, well done, um, brand of beverage I don't usually uh, choose. They, uh, they did a nice job there. It's interesting that this is not a sink. I'm assuming since that's going to return a task, we're going to want to do that. Um, we don't really need to await that, but I'm ex... Well, are we going to... You know what? We're going to find out. Let's see what our caching is going to look like. Uh, what did we take in for our other one? Just a memory cache? We'll do the same thing in this one. So, memory cache is going to be our actual caching uh, piece here. And what's the call we use on it? Um, try get value for a specific value. Uh, but that's not really what we're doing. We're not doing that. Uh, we're doing an individual call for like all live channels. Um, that's individual channel is live. So we specifically were wanting to do this because of this one. Not quite as much that one. Uh, because this is much less likely to have, uh, to get multiple hits of the same one, I think. I don't know. We'll see. Um, find, search service, find. Let's take a look at what it does. Let's open up the, uh, dapper one, so... So this does a select star from channel tags where channel ID is in channel IDs. Where did we use this SQL? Down here? So we're going to pass in the IDs that we got from the list of channels. But I don't think we want to do it that way. Um, so is this just getting us back all channel data? I think that's what this one does. So, uh, we'll assume that it is. We'll call this the, uh, I'm actually just going to put, put it like this. That's going to be the name. Uh, and actually, you know what? We're going to do it this way. Hang on. We're going to do a string interpolation and actually say, um, I channel search service, and this is going to be, uh, name of find, name of that, Oh, uh, right, I can't const it if I'm building it with uh, string interpolation because it can't it can't create it at compile time then necessarily uh, unless I put it in literally. So um, I could do like a read-only string or something like that, but then again, that would be a little bit weird. Um, uh, logging tends to be used for recording how a system is behaving. Auditing is more to do with recording that behavior for a longer period of time, such as financial security compliance. Uh, yes, uh, as Simon is mentioning, that is absolutely correct. So if you are doing an auditing trail of these kinds of things, then yes, uh, you would you would want to uh, like actually be recording that in some significant place to be able to actually check that stuff. Um, oh, yeah, see, link slumps, that, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, if you're doing... Uh, like, any kind of pharmaceutical stuff, then that is the kind of business where you would want an auditing trail. Uh, and, uh, I noticed, uh, another one of our, uh, past guests there in, uh, in, uh, chat. Uh, that would be, uh, our, uh, good friend, Mr. Gifford. Uh, and, uh, welcome, Terrible Television. Uh, thanks for that follow, much appreciated. Uh, I don't know if you replied to me on, on the Twitters yet, because I've been on here. Um, wait, what? 
Oh, 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 oh my god, I just looked to see what your message is. Oh man, you, oh, I'm gonna toss this on stream so everybody can see this. This is awesome. I just, I just saw his response here. Uh, so, uh, James and I are gonna be at a, uh, at the same conference coming up here soon. I'm hoping to do something if we can manage to pull some kind of, uh, stream related something or other on the event uh but that would be really sweet if uh if we actually had a uh kind of thing uh yes crimson i think i mentioned uh earlier that you were going to be there as well there's going to be a bunch of people there um wait simon uh i assumed simon's name was simon i don't know why it wouldn't be <laughs> Yes, Crimson Green will be there as well, and uh, a number of our guests are going to be there. I started getting responses from a lot of them. I am actually now wondering, because one of our guests responded and said he'll be there, but I... Uh, oh, no, okay. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Good stuff, good stuff. Hopefully, hopefully we can get all those things going well. I, I'm hoping I can stream for the event. If I can, that'll be a Friday stream. Uh, so it'll be a strange Friday stream from us here on Dev Chatter. Either way, let's take a look. So we have our cash key. What do we have? Uh, try get value. That's going to give me a T item back. So we're going to say cash key. Um, actually, do we want to, do we want to do that? Hang on. I thought they gave me a real one. Get or create a sync. There, get or create. Uh, ooh. Uh, let's do this first and see what happens. So, cash key. So, here's the funny thing. I used to build my own get or create. Uh, essentially, I, I built, so I would always build a wrapper around ASP.NET's caching because I wanted to be able to get a, I wanted to be able to have a get or create method. And so on one of our recent streams, I was like, hey, look, they have this memory cache thing. And I was calling it and I was like, wait a minute, it has get or create. OMG, the thing I've been doing for a decade because they wouldn't give it to us. They finally have. I used to do this crap with delegates and then they added lambdas and it got so nice and now they finally built it in right into, <laughs> into the, uh, the, uh, I memory cache interface. Uh, it's added as an extension method, I believe, but I'm still not going to complain. So this is going to be our cache entry right here. Um, why did you give me a new line and then take my new line away? Whoops, that's not the one. I wanted to show you all this one. So. Uh, did I not do it here? I swear I did it here. Did I get rid of my getter create? I oh here it is. Okay, so you'll see what it does is you call it and then you pass in your cache key, and it gives you back the entry. And this is the cache entry. So what you do is you set up an app, you set up your expiration, whatever it's going to be, and then you return back the data. So this object that you're dealing with in here is the actual cache entry object. So I think for this find, we're going to assume that data won't change very much. So I'm actually just going to have it cache for like 10 minutes, uh, just to be a little safe. And then we are going to do a return. And I, I will uh, make sure I thank whoever that was that just uh, um, just followed us here. Uh, so first off, thank you, whoever that was that just followed. And uh, get or create. Which means that this is going to return back um, channels and and we are going to return channels okay so bit of clarification here which I actually want to make sure that I adjust this so I'm not gonna leave it as written uh, because this is, uh, is is confusing uh, so first off Yasu welcome and thanks for that follow much appreciated and uh, oh Noah duck thank you uh, for that follow as well did you say duck? Is there is there a duck in the stream? Got my rubber ducks cap on. See? 
quack. We, we, we love the ducks here, so. <laughs> and, uh, oh no, a duck! Someone with the Twitch Prime sub! That is awesome! Hey, that's what... Uh, <laughs> and, uh, thank you for, the, for uh, chiming in with the hype there, Auto SMD. Uh, oh no, a duck! So, subbed for the duck! Uh, wait, that duck or this duck? Are you talking about this duck? And yes, that is that is a rubber duck over there. Yeah. Uh Sibir Sibirnsky? Uh and I apologize if I just butchered that, but welcome. Thanks for following. Much appreciated. Uh always worth it to sub for a duck. Uh sadly our channel mascot are Chatosauruses. Uh however, um there there have been no reported instances of a Chatosaurus ever eating a duck. Just just to be clear. No ducks were harmed in the creation of this live stream. Uh, you still built a generic provider around memory cache as the typical use case I get is hydrate tea from Dow. Uh, yeah, so Simon, we were originally doing that, and then I felt like that was adding an extra layer that we didn't want to deal with and having to explain that to people that would be working on the project that are outside of it. So because we're an open source project and we're going to have people coming in and checking out the code, we wanted to simplify a little bit. And uh, hey, Jay, Steph, welcome. Uh, so either I missed you on the last stream or it's been a couple of streams since I've seen you here. Vegetarian, vegetarian Chatosauruses. Uh, unlikely. They just don't like duck. They just don't like duck. Alright, so I want to make this an actual full method. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing that... Actually, first I should show you why I'm doing that. So, uh, here, here's a challenge. In, uh, in .NET... In, in, well, not just .NET code. Any, any statically typed code is very common uh, to see multiple returns. Some people frown on that. Now, here's the challenge. If you're reading this code... It is hard to tell absolutely for certain that this return, without glancing above, if my eyes are covering this space, I might see that as an alternate return from this method. But this is not a return for this method. This is a return for this method. And so that's an important distinction that I don't think you can identify at a glance. And so I do want to fix this. Uh, despite the fact that it's not really that bad, I think this will make it clearer. So I'm going to pull this out, and I don't like the name Factory. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this um, Find uh, Cache Fallback. So I like the term fallback here because that is a pretty good way of saying, hey, this is method. So I like that term because it's like, hey, we're gonna fall back to this if we don't find the thing that we were looking for elsewhere. Um, so, no, not the worst. It's the lack of. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Yeah, that's that is absolutely why Chatosauruses don't like eating duck. Uh, what do you do for local functions that might have local returns? Uh, fuel stable. I don't mind it as much on those, especially if they're only one method, and I do just kind of deal with that. Uh, but yes, it does come up all the time, Fuel Snable. Um, I just think in this case it makes a little bit more sense because of the way it looked in the method. I think that this this actually is a little bit clearer. But I obviously could write this like this, and I'm actually more okay with this. Now, the reason why I'm more okay with this setup than the other one, and, and here's actually why I, I write them this way. Um, I, I got in a mild argument with someone on Twitter about this argument. <laughs> We were not really arguing at all, uh, but someone was commenting that, that this is, is awful to put a method after the return, whereas I argue, no, this is the best place to put a local function because of the fact that at when this is compiled, this method that I've put inside, this is called a local function, by the way, for anyone that hasn't seen this syntax, um, I literally create this function that only lives inside of this method, and you might be saying that this looks kind of like creating a lambda, and it is kind of like that. Uh, it still has some of the same advantages of a lambda in the fact that I do have access to local variables, so I could use channels in here. So that name is totally valid in here. Uh, but the reason why I'm okay with this is after this lower level return, so notice this is at a, at a, a higher scope, clearly because of the indentation, I know Anything after this must be after the method has returned, and so that's what adds the clarity here. So I actually agree with Fuel Snable's suggestion, though I'm not sure it was a suggestion, uh, that we can write it like this, uh, and this is actually probably the best way. 
The reason why I wouldn't use a lambda here, uh, Simon, is because of this. Um, hang on. Uh, let's just back up a couple of uh, undos and we'll put it back into here. So now it's back to being a lambda in here. Now I could define this as a lambda variable um, by ext I could I could make this a variable that contains a lambda function by extracting the variable like this, right? But now we're in a similar situation where now if, I will agree that that having the func defined right here makes it a little bit easier to read this. But here's the problem I have with it: as a lambda, I cannot put it after the return because lambdas get created at the line where they are, whereas a local function is elevated up to the, the start of the method uh, is when it gets created. So the scope difference there is actually why I would do it that way. So I prefer the uh, local function approach. And what did I call this? Uh, this is... Um, I'm just gonna call it the cache fallback because in this context, it is the cache fallback. So there we go. Nice, short, simple, uh, and that, uh, so the reason why is so that I can tuck it here, uh, because this kind of keeps it out of the way. Uh, do you use that rubber duck for rubber duck debugging? Uh, J. Steph, uh, actually, I do not use that one for rubber duck debugging. Uh, this is uh, this is actually a rubber duck that um, that my son wandered in here with after taking a bath. So I I'm I'm at, I'm at home, and so this rubber duck. So if you see the mouth there, it like soaks up water and you can spray it with it. So like this is like literally my son's rubber duck that he uses in the bath. Not not my not my rubber duck debugging duck. So no no it's not that one. Um, does a local function really get moved to the beginning of the method on compile? Um, not exactly, um, Dungeon Smasher. So I, it it doesn't really get moved to the beginning. It's just that it gets created at that same scope. So it is at the scope of the beginning of the method. Um, so it it is scoped to the method if that makes sense. So it's not that it's moved to the first line. I I, I sorta. I sort of fibbed that, but it gets the scope as if it were, if, if that makes sense. Uh, Fuel Snable's correct. Um, as for local functions that you, so I, I should say his first first line was correct. Let me read the second one. Uh, that you state you would have to check the generated IO code. Uh, yes. Uh, so fuel stable is correct. If you're using local state, um, it, it will be elevated to the level it needs to be and actually, you know, be implemented within there. Uh, however, if it is not using any anything local, it will actually get moved into the class. Uh, so it, it effectively gives it to us at compile time. This is the only thing that can use it. Uh, but then once it's compiled, it is really going to be at the level of the class, uh, and technically something else could use it if you're accessing it with reflection. Uh, so it's kind of like keeping you mostly compile safe, I think is the way that it's actually set up. Um, Dungeon Smasher. Uh, no, it does not break closures because it is... Um, you are accessing the variable at the time that you access it. At, at the time that the methods run, not the time that the method is created. Uh, we, so we should clarify how those work. So um, regardless of where you declare this, um, the values that you that you use, so for example, if we use channels down here for something, maybe we pass that into the find, maybe there was a variable, and we pass that into the find, its value would not actually get pulled for the method until the method's run. So which would be at whatever point get or create called it is when that would actually happen. So fantastic question. Great, great clarification to put in there. Um, they're, they're really cool. I, I absolutely love local functions because I like this syntax and I love putting them after the return because I can have a, a function that is only used by like the internal one it's in and it kind of hides it away. So I like the approach. I think that made it, made that, clearer to read uh, but you do have to get used to the syntax um, closes over variables not val uh, exactly fuel snables correct yep it uses variables and not values which is why uh, when 
when it happens at runtime is the value you get, not the... So when the method is called is when the value is accessed, not when the function is created. Uh, and so that's the significance. Uh, fuel stable is correct. Uh, does that implementation prevent accessing the cache a second time compared to an if guard check for the cache value? Um, so we are we are not uh, we're not protected against a second check right now. We would have to actually write that in, but I'm not going to deal with that right now because. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, well said, Fuel Snable. Well said. Uh, J. Uh, ooh, is that J. Speckland or J. S. Peckland? I'm not sure. Uh, but either way, welcome and uh, thanks for that follow. Much appreciated. And if anyone else is in here and hasn't clicked that follow button, be sure to do so. Is that is the best way to get notified when we live? When we go live. Speaking of when we're going to be live, uh, we will be live on Monday next week and Tuesday, uh, as well as Thursday. So we're going to do those three streams. We should also have a Saturday stream next week, and there is the possibility of a bonus Friday stream. However, if we do a bonus Friday stream, I might end up skipping our Thursday or Saturday stream. Maybe we'll see. Uh, but that is the plan. Uh, Striker, welcome. Greetings. Uh, you've been here before, but it's been a while, I think. Your name is familiar. Pretty sure you've been here. Either way, I'm going to say welcome back because I'm pretty sure you have. Exactly, but I think it's been at least a month or two. Uh, but I don't, I don't remember. But glad to see you're here. Hope you're doing well. And that same goes for everyone, actually. It is hard to remember everybody that shows up to the stream. Uh, like, it is challenging, so, I'm, I'm not kidding about that, like, let me just drag this on so you can see, like, we have had over 70,000, uh, views on this stream, now obviously that, you know, if you show up to multiple streams, you count, you know, multiple times, but either way, that's a lot of people, so I'm always impressed when I remember anybody that shows up, so I'm kind of proud of myself on that one, so, <laughs> glad I was right. Uh, ah, you've been occupied with school stuff. Well, hopefully that's all going well. Uh, wait, uh, who are you, Will? Developers, developers, developers. Hey, welcome developers, 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 developers from Robert's stream. Uh, I will make sure I talk with Robert as soon as I'm sure he's in here. Uh, yes, welcome. Uh, ra raid defenses activated. Uh, we have an army of Chattasauruses on the way. Uh, greetings, Robert. Uh, James, hello, hello. Uh... Or Jameson, I can't remember which. I think I guessed multiple ways in the past. Uh, and I don't remember a clarification on that. Pixel Breath, CMJ Chris Jones, welcome, welcome. Hey, Coded Beard. Uh, welcome, everyone. Glad to see you're all here. Hopefully that uh, Robert Table's stream was fun. I think he was doing something hardware-related today. I didn't actually get the chance to check in, but... Uh... Ah, it is James, see? Uh... Mamperset, hello, hello, welcome. <laughs> also, I love the, uh, the heck. The, uh, m Matt, I'm guessing, is what M at is. That works. <laughs> hey, it's hard to guess those things. Uh, names are hard on streams. Uh, so, either way, welcome everyone. Hopefully your days are going well. Uh, <laughs> thanks, SMB. I, hang on, that's actually a good point. Uh, I'm going to restart the bot, everyone. Uh, and the reason why is because uh, SNB just used the fuel snable command there. And uh, I feel like we should be able to use the SNB command. And we still have that bug that we created when we switched to uh, being a web app that makes it so that we do need a restart before we have access to our um, newly created commands in the uh, in the system we really need to fix that at some point but we'll see let's get the bot started come on bot we're so the reason why it takes a while for the bot to stop start is actually because it hasn't fully stopped yet it takes a while before it lets go of all of its resources uh, so there it goes and the SNB command works <laughs> we added a new command for SNB today uh, okay sounds good Robert tables I'll talk to you about your stream in a bit uh, not school stuff, school ship. Uh, although it is indeed part of school, I guess, I'm coding an API in Node.js for a smartphone app, uh, which my colleagues are developing. Oh, okay, Striker, I get it. That makes sense. Fun, fun. Uh, and Will, I apologize. Uh, the 
it was going to take a minute before the stream overlay came so probably what's going to happen is if i have that uh it's probably going to come up while you're doing that uh oh that looks repeating that word looks whatever that word is looks evil so they're playing a hangman game in the chat here um and and that looks like an evil word because that that does not look easy uh so i'm gonna see if i can help Uh, I'm not sure what that word is. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, those are good guesses. <laughs> uh, someone must have typoed Stream Deck. Uh, oh, uh, SMB did HMDM. That's what happened. <laughs> Well done. So the, the hangman word was stream deck. Uh, that was not rigged because uh... <laughs> good good attempt there, wait task. Good attempt. Uh, Will Bennett sniped in there before you could get it. So well done, everyone. We, we managed to get the hangman word, so we saved our hangman today. Good job. Okay, so let's get this cached. So first things first. Let's make a little cache key. We're gonna just going to do simple caching on this for now. Uh, just because we want to have some basic stuff, so literally this last one we just said, hey, just shove it in there for 10, 10 minutes, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll want to make this configurable at some point, so let's just make a note. Uh, uh, configuration. Move to configuration. Uh, let's say config setting. Uh, that's a good way of describing. Uh, when you're even when you're when you're renaming and coming up with better names for your comments, that is how important naming is in coding. <laughs> All right. Uh, next thing we want to do is okay. This one. Uh, ooh, do we? You know what? I'm not gonna cache this one yet. Uh, so to do, add caching. All right, we need to make this other one's caching a little bit more advanced, I think. Uh, oh, sorry, that finishes the caching. Let's fix up the actual data call itself. So here we go. So that adds the caching piece. We're not using it yet, but let's take a look because we noticed that this code that's in here is not good. Well, not it's not bad, but it, it doesn't it, it's not efficient, uh, and that's actually going to be a problem when it's a an API call. Uh, yeah, see, look, to do, pull all data in one request and or cache a lot. So I think in this case, we're going to want to cache it uh, and pull it all in one request. So what did we do? Uh, we said select star from the channel tags where the channel ID is in the channel ID. First off, I'm going to move this closer to where it's used. Uh, so this is a little less confusing so we can see where that variable is coming from. We're going to make it a constant, and by making it a constant, it now makes it so that we as the developers can see that the value is declared here, but this can just get compiled away so this is not like an executed line uh, that happens here. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, yeah, so people playing rock, paper, scissors. Someone's uh the bots bots on vacation. What is the oh did we did we kill the bot somehow? Yeah, we um it's not responding to the command right now. Well that's just not fair to everyone. Oh, oh wait, hang on, maybe they don't have uh No? Really? No, it's not back. No, because I have coins. It didn't let anyone join. Um, huh. Well, I'm going to stop the bot and take a look. Did it report anything in the output? No. Whoa. Some Okay, something was weird when the bot started. I got no output from it. So, like, it's it was currently running and it was not spitting out the output. So, it's almost like it or Visual Studio didn't connect or something. Huh. I've never seen that. That's new. That is new to me. I have never seen an ASP.NET Core app wire up without actually uh, spitting back output into Visual Studio. So something got a little wonky there. 
That's a new one. <laughs> yeah, Will, I didn't pay the bot. Uh, in fact, I've never paid the bot. All right, the bot is back up and running. Uh, uh, Striker, make sure you just type in uh, exclamation point RPS if you want something. Uh, you got to do it like uh, like like we're doing it there. Okay, so let's pull some data. So first off, I'm going to put an at sign here on the outside of the string, so that tells it that I'm going to write this in a fun way. Uh, here's what I'm thinking. So that gets us our initial query. So select star from that. Select star from... Uh, you know what? I'm just going to repeat this for now. Because that's going to be that one. Where did we get our IDs originally when we did this? The IDs came from channel IDs, which came from selecting the channel ID off of that... Uh, oh, off of the channels in the system. So it's just getting all the channels. What? Wait, what? Why are we doing it then? We don't need these channels. We could just select all of them. Oh, no, 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 because it would only get us tags that are actually being used. Right? It would limit it to only tags that are getting used by something then? But why do we care? Well, let's just grab them all. We're just going to grab all the channel tags. I don't know why we wouldn't, so we'll just grab all the channel tags. Uh, and then... This is wiring them together so that we're getting uh, channel and tag together. Okay, we can do that. Um, hey! Woohoo! The bot chose the bot chose scissors. We won. It's rigged again. Thanks, S and B. <laughs> Rock paper scissors. Where choice is greater than the bot choice. Right answer, Will. Right answer. Everything is rigged. No, it's not. It's not rigged. Do you do you want to go see the code? The code is available. Uh, right. Brain. Let's do our thing. So if we pull back all, so that gets us all the channel tags, which we could just do. We could just grab all the channel tags. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Uh, oh. Paramedic, coming in with a Twitch Prime sub two months in a row. Uh, much appreciated. There's some hype in there. Oh, man. You are, you are almost to, uh, your egg is about to hatch one more month and we get a hatching egg in there. That is, uh, something nice to look forward to. Uh, Groat, uh, yeah, we, we maybe, we, uh, wait, bug? Bug with what? Bug with what? RPS paper? Paper? We assigned scissors? Um... I am not sure. Is there something weird with your paper? There's something wrong with your paper, I think. Uh, it could be like that, that one of those characters isn't a standard, uh, isn't a standard character that you used in there. I'm not sure. Did you hide something in there? Well, if you did, I don't see it. Yeah, that is not the word paper. So that's why there's no bug. Uh, no, no, it's, uh, yeah, so what's weird is your paper's not considered paper by Visual Studio. So whatever you typed in there, you put in a nice Unicode character or something. 
Uh, that's why I wouldn't read it. Okay, so we're gonna select start from the channel. Uh, let's let's write this this way. We're gonna go over to SQL Server Object Explorer and actually just write the SQL and see how we can make this one quick query that just pulls all the data that we wanted and do it all at once. Uh, we can do it separately if we need to. Do we wire it all together? Do we wire it all together? Channels and tags are okay. I think we're going to do one query that pulls back all the channel tags that are used by a channel and all the channels. And then we will still put them together like this, I think. Uh, only because that is just a simpler way to put the structure together and I don't think will be all that costly. Uh, so we'll do it that way for now and we can rewrite it nicer later if we want to. So let's start out simple. Uh, so select star from channel. Uh, this is going to be channels, actually. Get it right, Brendan. Now, here's the question. Let's look at this data one more time. How did they wire together? What's actually on channel? Does channel have tag or tag ID? So it has the actual tags. I wonder, can we can we pull that out together? Let's ask the internet real fast. Dapper, uh, pull, nested. Yeah, is there a way to nicely do that? In one call? Okay, so if we do, so we could do a multi-query again like this, which we used to have a few of these and we got rid of them because uh, some complexity issues that we were running into with them. Um, yeah, see, Groat, uh, Groat is trying to do the, um, oh man, I can't even remember, hang on. Wow, did it actually, did it actually, no, it's still not, I'm still like, well, that's weird, because the silly thing is, it is recognizing that I used the command command, I can see it. Huh. Yeah, there's some kind of issue. I'm gonna have to look into that. I wonder if it's actually something with Twitch Lib that's causing us the problem over in the bot. Huh. Yeah, hang on. Manage commands. Uh Hey Rubik's welcome. Uh, uh, Striker, uh, the bot is using uh, SQL Server, technically. Not that that matters that much. There we go. Okay. 
Yes, MSSQL, that is correct. Do 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 do. do. SQL query, so select star. Hmm. So, uh, so, we're gonna do this select star from channels. Inner join channel tags ct on ct uh, ct dot channel id equals c dot id inner join uh, tags t on t dot id equals ct dot tag id So that effectively gets us all the data that we actually wanted to pull out, um, except that we don't really want to pull all of it. We want to pull like C dot star and T dot star, but we don't actually care about um, that because that's just how we do the mapping. So if we run this, this should be the query that we actually want to do to get all the data, which it does. The problem is we get duplicates of these when we do that, because it pulls back out extra data than we actually need, because uh, some of that doesn't need to be there. Huh. Uh. <laughs> uh no so striker we can't really distinct it um and a group by doesn't really help us either unless we we're planning on grouping by and pivoting um alternately we could do this where we um We could do this, hang on. Uh, pull, pull back the channels. Select star from channels. And then separately do this one where this pulls back c.id which actually we don't even need the channel at that point so we will do ct.id channel id t.id we're going to remove this one so we're actually going to select from channel tags and do this instead and then this is what we're pulling so essentially saying this is going to be two queries done together one to grab that set and one to grab this set and then that'll let us wire them together now the challenge here is that um, this data is not exactly the data we want because I don't think channel tag is really what we have at that point. Let's take a look. Does tag actually have the channel tag or not? As name and description only. So it doesn't really know what it is. So we are going to go back to what it was, and we're going to pull back all the data like this for now. Well, or alternately, we could just do it as uh, three, three queries for the same data all at once. Select star from that, and then we'd map it together. No, we'll do it like this, and try to try to un, un uh, unpack it. So let's try to unpack the data. Let's see what happens. We will attempt a bit of complexity in uh, in Dapper and see what we get out of it. And I see people saying stuff in chat. I will respond to you all in a second. Don't you worry. Uh, I will be there. Um, 
Uh, Green Dolph. Uh, yeah, we could maybe do it in Link. Um, uh, yeah, Group By won't really work here. Neither will Distinct because uh, we do actually need the separate data. Uh, well, instead of the T star, you do T column here. It's annoying. Uh, which thing? Uh, I mean, I can do do that, but we don't need to worry. So we don't need to worry about that. These should come out separately. Because um, we do need these values, I believe, still. So that'll get us our channel and our tags. Um, Uh, SNB, I'm not sure what find was meant to do. Um, where does this get called? Well, hang on. Let's see where the interface was called. Anywhere? It's not called from anywhere. Why do we even use it then? Well, that simplifies that. Anyone laughing yet? Oh, no, it gets called here. Okay. Uh, wait, no, that's that's just the cached version. That explains it, because I was like, this name and everything doesn't make sense. That explains why there was code that made no sense here. It doesn't make sense, and it needs to be gone. We replaced it a while ago, would be my guess. Put it somewhere else. Well, in that case, uh, I guess we can cache this one. To do, add caching. Okay. Uh, let's call it this. Dollar sign. Name of that. Name of that and then this value is going to be yeah, standardized channel name there's our cache key this is cache layer uh, get or create this can be async so we're gonna do the async one we're going to await this storing this in a variable that is unknown at this point uh, which is actually gonna be a channel and it's gonna take in the cache key as the first parameter uh, the second parameter is going to be the factory, which we're going to call entry. We're going to call entry. This is a variable name in it for now. Uh, we are going to return back search service dot get channel sound x standard channel service name and the entry absolute expiration. span relative so time span from what is this one this one gets a channel that sounds like a thing uh, I almost want to cache this for like an hour because I don't see it well let's do from minutes we'll go with 15 minutes so we're gonna cache that for some amount of time and I'm just gonna say to do, to do uh, store in config setting. Fix that. And then this is going to be channel. 
Now this I want to store as a local function uh, for reasons we discussed earlier on the stream. And it is going to be called uh, cache fallback. Alright, what's going on in the chat? Whole bunch of stuff. Whoo! Lots of stuff. Um Uh, yeah, SMB, I do, I do think we did it better elsewhere. Uh, sorry, SMB, I have not uh, implemented the code that lets you change our, um, our overlay yet. <laughs> That's true, Simon. Once you delete the code, it definitely doesn't have bugs anymore. Uh... Do, do, do. Uh, yeah, so Janiska, we are gonna we are gonna add in the thing at some point that lets you all change the uh, the overlay. So all the the color around me that's currently green, uh, we will give you all control over that uh, at some point in the future. Uh, for now, uh, you don't actually have that control, and you are dependent on me to to actually change the colors now and again, just so you can get a little bit of variance in that. Uh, but no, we are we are going to give all of you control over that color that's around the stream. Uh, and it is full hex code color that you get there, so... Caffeinated developer fuel right there. I think that I think that'll do it. All right, let's wire this up to work. Uh, startup. So now we actually have to make this. So we're using a decorator to make this work. In order to do that, we have to do this. Um, Twitch stream service. Uh, we want channel search service that one and then we want to say cache channel search service um, channel search service fac factory Taking in uh, an I service provider. New cash channel service. And this needs to take in. Um, it's going to take in a new regular service that's going to come from the service provider. However, we need to cache it as an iChannel search service. We're going to say x.getService uh, of type type of uh, channel search service. It's going to be one of those. At the end of that, and in addition, it also needs a memory cache. So I memory cache that takes in x dot get service type of I memory cache. So that is our factory that creates that. Uh, so that's actually the magic right there. This is a magic little thing that will create for us a new, uh, that's basically the, the how do you create the cached version. Uh, so we're gonna say services.addscoped. Um, so essentially we've told the system, create a channel search service, a real one, 
Um, and we're going to ask for it here, specifically, and cast it as the interface so that the method accepts it as that. In addition, so this is basically creating, here's the lower, here's the lower tier one. This is going to get used as that. And then we want to say, hey, when you get asked for an iChannel search uh, service, we want you to actually use the cached channel search service for it. And to do it, we want you to use the channel search service factory when you create it. So we're basically saying, hey, when you get asked for this, do give it one of these and use this method to create it, is basically what we just said. Slightly complicated, but that is also the, the magic of that. Um, and uh, yes, Will, there, yes, there are other ways of, of doing those kinds of constrained things. Um, uh, is there spread over? Yes. There's lots of cool stuff. Uh, I don't know how many people use um, uh, a lot of the, the modern features of, uh, of various languages, but um, the spread operator is super useful. One of the cool features I like uh, is... Do, do, do. Uh, I'm gonna guess Santosh, but, uh, I apologize if I just butchered your name. Either way, welcome, thanks for following, much appreciated. Proxies are a design pattern. Uh, yes, there is a proxy design pattern. Uh, do you need to remove the add transient or iChannel search service online? Yes, CMJ Chris Jones, yes, we do need to get rid of the other instance of, of using, uh, this, which is right here. Bonk. That should be enough. Um, field greed. Uh, was there a reason that we went with view instead of react? Uh, yeah. Um, when I looked at uh, the options that were available when we started this, I looked at using Angular, React, and Vue, and we liked Vue the best uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, one of them being, so first off, both Vue and React will nicely get added into a solution in a lightweight manner. So that is part of the reason why uh, we'd ruled out Angular in the beginning of our, our choices. Uh, because we said it would be nice if we could just kind of sprinkle in a little bit of view into our application. So that's actually why we did it that way. Uh, the next interesting reason why we chose view is because we felt that the uh, learning curve on view is much lower than it is on React or Angular for that matter. Uh, so the thought being, if we're going to be an open source project and we want people to be able to just jump in and contribute, there's a good chance that they don't know Vue, React, Angular, or whatever choice we make. So we should choose the one that we think people will be able to get up to speed with the fastest. And we think that that answer is Vue. Uh, so maybe you agree with us, maybe you don't, but that is actually why we chose it. Uh, we think they're all good options. So Angular, React, Vue, maybe you use Aurelia, doesn't matter. Uh, pick the one you like and and go with it. But yeah, that's uh, that's why we went with that one. So, yep, and uh, I actually really, really like it. Big fan of you. So if you, uh, big, big fan of you. <laughs> That's what it sounded like I said. Uh, we'll pretend I did. Big fan of all of you out there. Yeah, right in the feels. Love all of you, you know. You know, like a heart thing. I can't do a heart thing. Who am I kidding? Maybe I'll do like one of these, uh, which line it up with the camera. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, Robert Tables, exactly. Choose whatever works for your project. Um, so as I mentioned, because we wanted to be able to sprinkle it in and do it this way, because I both wanted to show off uh, ASP.NET Core Razor page stuff, as well as being able to do Vue stuff, React and Vue worked really well for that. Or, or, or Angular, for example, was not going to work well with the approach that we did. If we were going full on SPA website, we could have chosen any of them and it would have been fine. So, uh, there's also a decorator that is different than the decorator pattern. Uh... Which, uh, which decorator are you talking about there, Will? Uh, either way, uh, I think this is going to work. We're going to take a look. Here's the way we're going to do it. I am going to go ahead and toss a breakpoint onto this code. Right here. We're going to go into the cached version of this as well. And I'm going to toss a breakpoint right there. 
and we're going to debug this project. We're going to go into the GraphQL query. We're going to make a query for the data that we're trying to get, and we're going to see what happens. Let's go. And, uh, and uh, Field Agreed, thank you for asking such a good question, actually. Uh, I always like when people ask questions in here, and uh, assumptions should should also be uh, should be questioned. Uh, if I'm doing something some way, and uh, you're wondering why it is, and that, that goes not just for me, but for anybody programming anything anywhere, uh, is a good idea to ask, hey, why are you doing it this way, if it seems odd for some reason to you, uh, because that's the only way that stuff gets questioned. Uh, because I could be making a false assumption about something. It is always possible. So we're going to go with UI... Uh, UI Playground right here. So here we go. Uh, so which one did were we were we messing with? We were messing with the Soundex one. So I will run this. That'll run just fine. Uh, do we still have SNB's example code up somewhere? Nope. Uh, we're about to, because I'm just going to drag a new instance of that over onto the screen. Because then we can actually just look at, uh, at what was in there and match it. There it is. Alright, uh, so we want channel, whoops, channel sound X. Uh, this has a name, and let's say that this is Death Cheddar. By the way, don't eat the Death Cheddar. It's very spicy. Very spicy. Uh, we want name, and actually, that's all we needed, isn't it? Oh, see, it's got a it's, it's got a stop button because uh... no, no, Death Cheddar is gonna work. <laughs> we'll see if it works. It doesn't ma I don't actually care whether the query responds back with the correct data, SNB. I'm checking to see whether it calls the correct pieces along the way to make the call. Whether it succeeds or not doesn't matter. Okay, so we came up with Def Cheddar. The cache key we created looks correct. Uh, this is checking like the... F we're, we're just checking the pipeline. We don't care about the results or whether or not it's working. We just want to see did it actually call through everything in production when we did this. Uh, so that should be the query there. So it call it went through the cache layer and now went to the actual one. So if I finish that, it came back with nothing, which is fine. How about Dev Cheddar? Do we have Dev Cheddar? It's a cheese stream. It's all about de hey Dev Cheddar worked! Yay! <laughs> So it definitely, so it got it, and uh, it called through to the correct layers. So now here's the question. If we run Dev Cheddar again, does it call the lower one? It shouldn't. It should be cached. Hey, hey! it was cached. It didn't call it. We still have our breakpoint in the other one, don't we? Channel search service. Yep, this breakpoint was not hit. So I'll leave the breakpoint there and remove this one, and we can just run this query. But then if I change this at all, so we change it from dev chatter to def chatter. I'm going to wait till the Chatosauruses leave the screen so you can all see this. Um, so I change it to def chatter with an F. And this time it did call it because that version wasn't cached yet. So now uh, it should have def chatter cached. And we can call this repeatedly and it doesn't hit it. So it is caching each one of these. Uh, so instead of that, we could say, like, Bev uh, Chatter, which it maybe can get. Hey, we're in here for Bev Chatter, see? So our caching works, and the cool thing is, uh, if you actually look at what we changed, here's what's strong. So this is open close principle example right here. If you look at the code, you'll see we modified this how we initialize. So we, we modified the IOC, and that's fine. We added in this new cached version of the class. This is an unrelated commit, <laughs> as is this. So literally, the only two things we did are right here that made the caching work. We created an entirely new object. So when we talk about the open-close principle being open to extension and closed to modification, you'll see that our structure allowed us to extend it by adding in caching, 
without modifying the existing calls. So the data that calls our channel search service, not modified. The code that actually does the search, not modified. We added in caching with zero changes to anything else. That is why I, I love when you can actually make the open close principle work. And we did it without actually adding a lot of complexity either, because really all we did was make sure we're implementing an interface. That's it. So nice and easy. So when people always ask, why did you implement, why did you create an interface for this? And that's the answer, because when you create an interface, you have left yourself the ability to actually affect change. So affecting change here is what we want to be able to do. So NSO, uh, so yes, yeah, sometimes it is complicated, but that's actually part of the reason why you want to try not to add complexity when you add these kinds of things. So that's the idea here. Um, <laughs> solid this, solid that. <laughs> it will. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of that. That was pretty cool. I liked how that worked. All right, so here's the deal. We're gonna we're gonna start off. So our first commit, we're gonna do two commits here, uh, not on this branch. We are gonna do. Um, so we're gonna say uh, cache the um, what is it? It's the channel search service. That's the name. Uh, welcome, uh, gas mask. Um, much appreciated. Thanks for that follow. So first commit is going to be remove unused uh... I don't know why that was there. So we're gonna remove that first because that could go on in, in on its own. These are clearly unrelated to that. So this commit will be add uh, cached channel search service using decorator pattern all right there we go we're gonna publish that branch <laughs> solid is really good um, like seriously if you if you are gonna do object-oriented programming um, it is very important to understand how to do it well because you can well okay let's phrase I don't care what programming paradigm you're following you can write bad code but it is pretty darn easy to write really bad code in object-oriented programming. You can write some terrible stuff, uh, like any of us. And I don't mean you, I don't mean you. I mean like any of one can. Any of us can. It's really easy to let your code get out of control. So it's why we try to think about it. It's why we try to take Knight's approaches. Um, keep keep the code clean when you can. Let it get messy sometimes. But if you are gonna let it get messy, make make that a conscious choice. Don't, don't just do it because you weren't paying attention. All right. Um, I am going to commit that because um, because I have now um, I have now twice seen and uh, wanted to tweak that. So. All right. Uh, the L in solid. Uh, Liskov substitution. That's because it's it's a name. It, it's it's a person's name instead of anything that actually has to do with the the um, the principle itself. Uh, so, for example, if it were the substitution principle of Liskov and you started it with an S, it would make way more sense and people would remember it better. But you're right. That is part of the reason why because the other ones are all you know single responsibility. S makes sense there. It's part of the. It's really part of it. Um, interface segregation, the I totally makes sense. It's about interfaces. Uh, and then the, uh, wait, uh, O, uh, open close principle. And you've got the dependency inversion principle. So like all the other ones, they make sense what they are, but Liskov substitution should be an S because it should be about the su uh, substitution. So, yeah, exactly. So, so Will, Will is correct. You'd never remember Sosid. Uh, maybe it's, maybe it's, maybe it would be this then. Maybe it'd be... Dossy or I I I I sods. Clearly, that's what it is. It's the I sods. Uh, you know the I sods principle. Yeah, there you go. The diso the disos. <laughs> we got a little bit weird here on the stream today, everyone. All right. Uh, 
We need we need a new name for solid. It's clearly clearly inefficient. All right. Uh, so first off, I'm gonna tell this that it, it's gonna be a draft pull request first. Adding uh, caching to channel search service. So we're gonna draft this pull request. If you haven't seen that feature, by the way, absolutely love it. Uh, the being able to create a draft of a pull request is fantastic because now I can just go in and take a look at it and and if I forget to do anything with it this this pull request is already created I just have to turn it on now <coughs> uh, <coughs> oh uh, in addition to dry uh, will we should also remember the don't repeat yourself principle that's another important one and uh, and the dry principle uh, and the don't repeat yourself principle uh, and the don't repeat yourself principle and the dry principle. We should remember all of those. <clears throat> Let's take a look. What are we committing here? Did we leave any debuggers? Nope. Did we leave any foos? Any bars? Uh, any to dos? What to dos did we? Uh, those are ones we got rid of. To do store and config section. Yeah, we'll do that later. I'm going to. Uh, be accepting of that one. <coughs> uh, those look sorted. Uh, that looks like a reasonable name. Uh, let me check again over here in Visual Studio. Well, no, because I already closed it, so we're not going to see that. Uh, we did an absolute expiration on 15 minutes. Uh, scoped that. That does not look terrible. I think that I think that looks okay. Uh, I will go ahead and make this an actual pull request now. Uh, I'm not going to merge it in just yet, but we'll make it an actual pull request. <clears throat> uh, Robert Tables, yes, Yagni and shipping is a feature. Robert Tables, I don't know if you're if you're someone that ever got uh, one of our software craftsmanship calendars that we used to make. Um, I don't know whether you did. Does anybody in the channel did any did anyone in this channel actually ever buy a software or, or obtain at a conference a software craftsmanship calendar? Any anybody in here actually have one of those? So we would actually so. We, we sold thousands of these things. Uh, like, we used to do them every year. For, like, five years, we, we would sell, like, thousands of these calendars. Uh, and then we would send, you know, more of them to conferences. Uh, so, basically, anybody in in, uh, in the Midwest uh, always got them because we would send them out to conferences. We used to... So, the problem is we used to actually ship them to Europe, which we were always surprised by because... We, made, we did make very clear these are American-style calendars, so the week is going to start on Sunday, not Monday. So, which is, I can tell you from someone that has used European calendars, it is confusing. Oh, man. <laughs> like, nothing messes you up worse than the week starting on the wrong day when you're looking at, like, a physical grid wall calendar. And uh, one second, I'm actually just going to jump to the other side of my green screen and grab those calendars, because Robert Tables apparently didn't know we made these. Um... There we go. Uh, see? Like physical wall calendars. There's where it is. See? What's <laughs> the week starting halfway through the weekend? What? So... Thing. Calendars. About various principles. So, look. Interface segregation principle. The open-closed principle. Liskov substitution. Single responsibility. That is one dangerous mouse, by the way. Dependency inversion principle. There's a uh, someone's. Uh, <laughs> and look, you mentioned Yagni. See? 
Yagni. Oh, oh, and the most important one to remember, everyone. Where is it? What month is that on? Don't repeat yourself, which is a green chalkboard, so it's invisible. See? <laughs> Problem with holding up green on front of a green in front of a green screen. Uh, so that was the 2011 calendar. We also then did a 2012 calendar where we reinvented the wheel. We thought it was funny because we were reinventing the wheel on our calendar. Because we did our calendar again. Uh, hang on, let me show you my favorite one. Alright, you're, you're all going to love this one because uh, at the end of the calendar... We did this. This is the last month. Calendar coder. And it says, blindly following tips from calendars is a best practice. So, these calendars are full of all these tips and jokes about, you know, writing good software and everything like that. We have all kinds of interesting things. Um, and what's funny about it is that... Um, we then we then troll everyone uh, at the end of our second calendar when we're like, yep, because <laughs> we're doing all these things. This is our anti-patterns calendar. So like everything in this one is an anti-pattern, like reinventing the wheel. And we're like, yeah, following the advice of a calendar. Yeah, that's probably an anti-pattern. <laughs> so we thought it was good. Uh, so yes, s &B. Lots of people have taken our images and, and thrown them out on the Internet in different places. So if you actually want to find the official place where they are, they're actually on DevIQ.com. And, uh, whoops, do I want to actually be here? Maybe. Um, so, the actual place where they are would be here. Uh, principles, and I should yell at Steve about the stuff. So, see, that's a calendar page. Calendar, calendar. See, they have all calendar pages on them. So, which is kind of cool. Uh, oh, the other one that I really like from this calendar, I have to show you this one because it's good. Because uh, there's a funny story with it. Uh, maybe, if I can make it happen. Where is this page? Here it is. So, right here, there's a bunch of people. They're on a Death March project. See? Death March. Walking off the edge of a cliff. See? Edge of cliff. People walking. Now the reason I'm showing you this one is this. Anybody recognize that guy right there? Look, it's me! Oh yeah, and that's our picture right there too. That's funny. See? Now you know where that picture came from. When we get new followers, look right up there right now. <laughs> So that's actually what that one is, and uh, the funny part is that it's, like, you might not believe me, but that's a pic- like, we're not photoshopped onto that cliff. I'm on that cliff. That's what the- that's what the funny thing is. That picture is real. Sort of. Kind of. What's fake about it is, so we are actually at a height high enough that if I fell off of there, I probably would have died. However, it's not way up in the sky, we photoshopped the, tw the trees away. So... There are trees behind us. We are low enough to the ground where there are trees, but yeah. Uh, so cool stuff. We actually made tons of these. Like literally, see, I still have a stack of them here. And uh, whoops, I grabbed two of that one. Uh, and two of that one. So I'm missing 2013 and this is 2014, which there's too much green on the cover for you to actually see it. Are there any guests of the stream in here? Oh, yes, there is. Hang on. There's a one of one of the guests on our stream. So first off, this guy has been a guest on our stream. That's Eric. He was one. Oh, we've uh, fuel snibble. We've all been on way too many death march projects. That's the whole problem. I am trying to convince this person to be on our stream. I, I need to convince him that he should he should join us sometime. Uh but this guy in the front there, that guy, 
That's, uh, that's Jimmy. He's been on our stream. And, uh, the creepy guy in the window. Right there. That guy's been on the stream quite a few times. That guy in the win- that's me in the window. That's the, uh... Uh, what did we- what's that one called? Mushroom Management. Where, uh... You don't give any information to the dev team. You just kind of put them in a corner and just kind of have them work, but you don't tell them anything. So yeah, good good stuff. We actually made uh, plenty of those counters. I'm trying to think how many we did. We did we did four initially, and I think we did two more. So I think there are six of those software craftsmanship calendars out there. Um, I remember we used to have a lot of problems with customs uh, <laughs> sending them to Europe because like literally we would send companies like a hundred calendars because they'd be like, yeah, we're gonna buy you know we're gonna get calendars and hand them out to all of our employees. So they all have these calendars. And so then, like, I don't know if you know this, but calendars, like, if you have 100 calendars, it's really heavy. So basically, like, we ship this ridiculously heavy boxes of paper, uh, you know, overseas. And Customs is basically like, what is this? This is super suspicious. There's, like, this box that's really heavy, and it's, like, you know, it's a small container that's really heavy. It's, like, that's suspicious. And it's, like, it's like yeah, no, it's just calendars. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally just calendars, but... Customs would basically always catch that because it'd be something it's like, okay guys, it's just paper. But I guess it's suspicious because they can't tell exactly what it is, so who knows. Either way, fun stuff. If you ever so the cool thing is if you ever went to any company and they had that calendar on the wall in their team room, you knew immediately this is a good place to work. Uh <laughs> yeah, well. 3D printing totally would have solved that problem. Are you kidding? Those boxes would have been enormous. All right, so let's take a look. How are we on time? We're, we're good on time, actually. Um, do I show another one of my side projects? Do we work on one of my side projects? You know what? Let's do it. <clears throat> um, all right, everyone, we're going to change up projects today, I think. So I'm going to toss a marker on here. We're going to take a look at something else kind of cool. Uh, we looked at this last time a little bit. Uh, whatever happened to Tetris? Uh, we, I mean, those games still exist, uh, Will Bennett. Um, the, uh, the games we were working on, it's, it's still there. We just haven't coded them in a while. Uh, if we bring in a guest that, that's interested in working on, on some kind of game, we can pull them out and work on them. Uh, I mean, the code's still on GitHub, too, if you want to take a look. So, they're, uh, right here in Game Jams. So... They didn't go anywhere. I mean, we do a lot of these projects just as, as you know, uh, like fun code to work on together. Um, the Dev Streams project is one we actually want to do something with, but but some of the other ones are like, yeah, if people want to people want to mess with them, cool. Yeah, they're they're like just fun side projects to work on because it's cool code more than anything else. I am going to show you all a hilarious thing I was working on. So let's go ahead and do this for now. We're going to sidetrack. We made a bit, little bit of progress on dev streams. So let's close the solution. Um, have you heard of Perlin Noise? Uh, Will, that doesn't mean anything to me. Though, uh, though Will, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want your help with something. I want to convince Mark to come on uh, Dev Chatter and help me out with some stuff. Uh, which I think he'll be cool with because I've helped him out with stuff before too. So we'll see. So here's the thing that I built, and yes, yes, bef before you before you get too critical, um, it is built in WinForms. Uh, however, uh, that's because I want to switch it to WinForms.NET Core 3.0 because I want to try that because I am hopeful that that or some similar solution to it will be set up to be able to run on Windows, Linux, Linux and Mac. I'm hoping that someone will get around to doing a nice solution, like a, by that I mean first party solution, not a third party solution, obviously those exist, um, but I want an actual Microsoft built um, GUI solution uh, that, that would run on the other operating systems, but maybe they don't want to. Uh, developed by Ken Perlin for Tron the Movie, uh, procedural textures and random number generation. Uh, Will, I absolutely want to learn more about that. 
So here's what I want to show you, because this is actually cool. So before you duck away, because oh no, Brendan's doing wind forms. Don't don't jump away just yet. I want to show you why why we're building this and what it does. Um, and I'm not gonna click that button just yet, uh, and I will show you why. So some people actually saw this separately, and I want to do a little bit of work on it on stream. So uh, let's actually work on it together. Uh, not supporting Mac is going to be a very big mistake every time. And uh, I, I agree, Robert, I agree 100%. I don't know that they're going to do it because the problem is that's like basically saying, hey, yeah, we're going to help our competitor, which, you know, they are in that sense. But at the same time, I absolutely agree they need to start supporting that. It's It's quite silly because, well, I mean, are you a software? I, I guess... The problem is that platform, like, the advantage of all of their dev tools are in selling, you know, Windows and their other software and Azure and, and other things like that. So if they're not selling that stuff, there's not really as, as big a benefit. Um, uh, and, and Robert, you're 100% you're correct. That is part of the problem is that people that run Apple computers are more likely to use AWS than they are to use Azure which is absolutely correct. I noticed this orange bar down here on the bottom and that seems to be clashing with my red on that. So I'm gonna change my overlay to be like green or something like that, just so that we don't have, uh, or maybe blue. There we go. So now that won't clash quite as much as the red did just because they're different colors now. Okay, there we go. And yes, Simon, uh, that, that is true. Microsoft's focus is definitely on uh, Azure. Um, sweet. Um, hang on. Clicking some buttons. I'm going to move this onto screen so you can all see it. Because you can't see what I'm doing right now. So I loaded up this game called Final Fantasy VII, which hilariously we're not really going to be playing on the stream. Let me hide my current project box because that's not what we're working on right now. So loading this again so I can show you all what we were doing. So first off, uh, if you see these four boxes, let me pull this from the game. So these are the colors that this window right here is blending together. It is blending these four colors, and they're sort of going together there. Um, yeah, see, he's getting this and popping up those messages. Are you playing this game, or is this on Steam? Thanks. Uh, I wish I could turn off my messaging. How do I turn that off on Steam so I don't have people messaging me while I'm in here? There we go. Do not disturb. Disables chat. Fantastic. That's what I wanted. <clears throat> okay. So here's the cool thing is I can go ahead and I can change all these values, right? And I could choose this set of colors. And I could send that to the game. And boom! We now have those colors, which looks kind of neat, first off. Now, the way that this works is uh, within the game, so, and there's a reason I'm showing you all this, they have these colors. So you can see they're all here. So this game has built in the ability to customize these windows. So here's the trick. Uh, so right down there in the chat, you may have noticed uh, that it now says menu color control enabled. So I can now say, uh, what? Sky blue. And the menu is sky blue now. And that just kind of happens. Uh, so the funny part is you could be like, you know what? Uh, that's not how you spell fuchsia. You spell it so, see it didn't change. It's spelled like this. And now it changed. Yep, that's all you have to do. So you can actually just send those in and it changes the color. Oh, that's bright. Uh, I bet it's spelled with an A. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh... Hey, it's not my fault. That's just what the, the, the set of color names are in there. I guess I could add the other one. I was just guessing. Hang on. Uh, so try a hex code next instead of uh, instead of a color name. Try try hex codes. And in addition to that, I want you to try four of them. 
So, uh, no, sorry, uh, not actually written as a hex number, uh, as in like the way you would write it on the internet. So like this. Uh, so, so like that. Yeah, exactly. Yep. But you can also do these. Where you can, so you can actually specify all four corners. So try specifying all four corners and check that out. Uh, but that's the that's the thing. I want to. So I, first off, I want to show you all that because it's kind of a cool little mechanism. Um. Uh, fuel snable. I don't know what color that is. Uh, thanks, Will Bennett. Yeah, no, I don't think uh, I don't think we're gonna get Nan as a color. Um, good try though. Oh, oh, that is that is a nice color set. Blue, red, yellow, and orange. I like it. That's got a it's got a nice glow to it. That's almost like uh, <clears throat> it's hard to hard to say that. That's it's kind of cool the way that comes in. That's a nice pattern. Uh, so the cool thing is. I don't actually have to be in the menu when you're doing that. I can actually just be going around and playing the game. Uh, yeah, I was surprised how well that color palette worked. That's actually not bad. So, you can actually just run it while I'm playing the game. Uh, and uh, that was one too many colors there, Andre. Uh, we do, so part of the validation is making sure that you specified exactly four known colors. So one or four are the only sets accepted. If you specify a fifth color, it doesn't work. See, there you go. Simon got us a new color while we're in the middle of this. <clears throat> so this is the cool thing that we're doing. Oh, fuel snable! I got it. I got it. So basically, uh, we we're, we're able to change that. So what we want to do that's kind of cool is I want to pull other stats, so character stats as well, while we're playing to allow chat to manipulate those. So that's essentially what what I want to build in addition to that. Chatosaurus Green. Uh, yeah, you gotta you gotta love this color, isn't that isn't that great? That's easy on the eyes. Uh, so the cool part is you can actually just do this, and chat has control. So that's that is the neat part about this. Uh, big fan of the way that works. Um, someone changed the color again. Hey, there you go. <laughs> oh, uh, Chris Jones. That is a uh, that is a nice. See, that's actually a pretty nice color there. That's easy. That's easier on the eyes right there. Uh, we can, we can definitely do that one as a as a full solid color. That's not bad. Okay, I'm gonna disconnect chat so that you don't have control over the menu anymore. Uh, so. So Bont should be disconnected. No more, no more menu control. Sorry, Will. Uh, I just turned it off. Uh, but here's why. Here's what we want to actually look at. So there's other stuff that I want to take control of here, uh, and that is, I set up this little screen. It's not wired up yet, uh, but this I want to actually pull character stats and allow us to manipulate character stats. Uh, so you'll notice I put in this section here commands. And I say allow max HP changes, allow current HP changes, allow stat increases, stat decreases, status inflictions. Uh, tacos are my food. Welcome. Thanks for following. Much appreciated. Uh, so this is the cool thing about it is I want to make it so that people can actually modify these values. So uh, I want you to be able to set up command names to, to modify these, whether or not the commands are enabled based on these checkboxes. And for some of these things, so if you are doing like a challenge run, so if someone's doing like a charity run or something like that, maybe they set up so that you can give them like a, a status infliction in game. If, you know, they cheer for 200 bits or something like that, they could poison your character or something like that mid battle. Uh, or they could decrease your stats if they pay, you know, 200 bits, right? Maybe uh, messing with current uh, hit points, for example, maybe they, you know, require that you do a cheer of 100 bits to do this. So, like, putting in these kinds of restrictions for this and then you can see the stats now the reason I'm putting the stats in here all as changeable values for the streamer is in case something goes wrong so if someone cheers and their command doesn't work for some reason maybe they typo it or something like that and it would have been wasted uh, I do want to give the streamer the chance to go in and correct it so that's why we need the ability for them to actually just manually do the change that the user intended 
uh, so that they can fix it if someone does actually make a mistake. The last column here is a special thing. So if anybody is actually, so if anyone in here has actually played this game, there is a, uh, so this, this game is 22 years old-ish at this point. And uh, when it came out, it, like, so 22 years ago is quite a while. When it came out, the way that it worked is this. There were a lot of decisions that you made early on in the game. You made decisions about things like um, uh, whether or not you were going to buy a flower from a character, uh, if, you, if you did buy the flower, who you were going to give it to, uh, so uh, things like that. Uh, discussions among the party members, who you agree with and who you disagree with, which characters you talk to in which order, uh, you know, who you put in charge, who you put in which groups, whether or not you... So you have different party members you can take with you. Uh, so, Riley Dom, you were five when it came out. Uh, see, now I feel really old. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so... The point being that there were a lot of decisions that you could make, and part of the reason for these decisions is that this game has this uh, underlying love uh, tracking that it does, which I am going to pull up some code that someone gave me, which is here? Yeah, there it is. Uh, I'm going to open up an incognito window and pull up this data. I don't know if he wants me to put the data public on the stream, so I'm not going to show it here. Um, and I'm going to show you all another program, which I apologize about the screen just going wonky there, but I had to approve it. And you'll see why once you see what this program does. So this program is called Cheat Engine, which actually... I'm going to connect it off screen here for a second. So I'm going to connect Cheat Engine to this game here. So it is connected to it right now. And the reason I'm connecting this is because what Cheat Engine actually does, it's a cool thing for programmers and, and anything like that. If you are interested in programming tech and that sort of stuff, this is a useful program to know because what it does is it lets you search the memory of the program in some interesting ways. So this can let you track down how this other code is actually working, what is changing, and also make changes to it. So, for example, if I were to grab this hex value and add an address manually, at that address, tell it that it is a single byte, and this is called Aerith Love. So that is the amount that that character likes me. And this value at this byte is how much Tifa likes me. Wow, those are incredibly similar right now. Uh, <laughs> this is... Whoops, I can spell. Uh, that is also a byte. And then the last one is the funny one. Okay, there we go. Uh, so let me make sure I can see chat here so I can actually talk to you about this. So basically, the, the what they built in was there's a system of points where certain actions will gain or lose points on these characters. And so th these are the values that they actually have for this. So notice that Tifa and Barrett are both in, in my current party. Um, Eris and uh, Yuffie are not. And I don't have a lot of points with these lower two. So... In the game, almost everybody that played it, at, at a certain point, you go on a date with one of the characters where you're at an amusement park and you just go on, like, it's just a generic date, doesn't really matter. Uh, but in the scheme of things, this was a bit of control that you had over the game. And so people that played it, you know, like, you, would, you might try to choose one or the other. So these are the two default choices. The only way to get... Yuffie and Barrett is basically to like grind intentionally to get their points and there's limited numbers so like you're constantly having to make the choices that make one of these two angry and make one of these two happy the whole time and if you don't do it just right you're not going on the date with either of these two so what I was planning on doing and here's the thing I want to build uh, this is the last page of this little application here, is the date page. 
I want to build a, a set of commands where basically someone can vote for uh, one of those characters. So you could vote for uh, any one of these to have the, you know, to be winning the date. And so essentially what we would do is manipulate these values and just change them and just be like, no, nope, we're just going to set them all to like one unless you are, you know, except for the one who's currently winning the vote. So essentially making like a, a bidding war against people in the chat. Uh, and this would, would be built not for like a coding live streamer, but for specifically people who play this game on stream. And yes, there is still a vibe. So this is a 22 year old game. However, uh, if you don't believe me, I am going to go, uh, just in case you don't, final, whoops, uh, final fantasy. It's probably under, yeah. So currently, there are channels playing this game. They're right here. So no, no big streamers on it right now, but there are people still playing this game after, you know, I don't know how many how many years is that yeah see so that guy's got a colorful menu right there we can see it in the in the image so uh over on the side there so that's that's kind of the cool thing uh, obviously if we build it for the one game we could build it for other games as well and not just this one so i think it's kind of a cool thing like building like game or like a game tie-in thing um this is going back to how i got into programming originally started with He's searching. Uh, yeah, so exactly, Riggin. So a lot of us program things because we think they're fun and interesting to get, like, to really dig into. We want to build something interesting. Uh, so, like, the, these concepts, this is why we all program. It's because we like doing cool stuff. <laughs> like, does it have to be the greatest thing we're ever going to do? No. No, it doesn't. But we have fun with it, and that's, that's kind of the cool thing. So never let programming stop being fun. Never, never get to that point. My best recommendation for any programmer that's been programming for less time than I have, never get to the point where it stops being fun. <clears throat> uh, okay, so we're going to leave that there. All right, so first things first. Let's see if we can't make this actually work. So let's try and display the data here first. So how do we want to do this? Um... Uh, yeah, Will, exactly. It, it is fun. Uh, so how did we do this one? <clears throat> I created a little command section. So I'm actually going to copy that. And put the command section over here. Wait, hang on. Uh, I don't want to bring that over here. I kind of want to put a. Uh... No, we will. We'll just we'll just put it right in here. That's that'll be fine. So this is WinForms. Hilariously, wasn't kidding about that. Was that in another container over here? What's the container over here in party? Oh, it's because I made that one scrollable. That's why it doesn't fit. Okay. I understand now. Um... Uh, anybody ever worked on the Apple IIe? You could turn off the computer and turn it back on really quickly to break out of any program and see the code still in memory. That is a hilarious trick there, Will. Uh, juxtaposed. Uh, so we actually did talk about that in a previous one. Uh, like, we, we did talk about that earlier. Uh, but that was actually mostly just because we were like, hey, this will be easy to just kind of, uh, you know, rad together a little application uh, just for the sake of it. This is, you know, not supposed to be like an actual like long-term business app or something like that. It's just a uh, fun little project that we were going to work on. So. 
not something where we're like, hey, yeah, let's do this. Uh, so it was just kind of built this way. Uh, so that does those things. And uh, the plan for this actually is to grab someone's set of controls, uh, like whether it be like Dev Expresses or Infragistics or Telerix or, or someone's and just toss them into the app at some point uh, and just, you know, niceify it a little bit. Um, uh, so how do we want to display this? Let's toss in a, what's it called? Flow? Flow. The funny thing being, uh, go ask C Sharp Fritz about uh, wind forms also, because he'll give you the same kind of answer that I will. Because uh, we both used to give this answer back when we worked at Telerik, which is basically as critical as, as we devs are about, you know, not, you know, like of, of recommending WPF and things like that. There really is not a problem with doing, you know, uh, wind forms or something like that. They really are great. Uh, and, and yeah, see, as Simon mentions there, wind, wind forms is great. Ran most of the world for years. Exactly. Yeah. And yes, Joe Philly. Exactly. Yes. That's what I mentioned when I talked about doing wind forms here, is that I'm hoping that Microsoft will cave and will make it so that the .NET Core 3.0 wind forms implementation, uh, that they make it either... Um, possible to separate out the win32 hooks and be able to put it on linux as well and mac uh, so that it would either be easy for them to add it as first party or for someone else to implement it the exact same way using the version that they put out for dotnet core 3.0 that uses you know obviously winforms using dotnet core why couldn't you just adjust it to you know work on mac and linux also then because you're basically then just saying hey we just need to ab abstract out how the uh, connection to the operating system works how the windowing system works uh, yes that's true Joan there's always there's always wine uh, so is the WinForms application making changes directly to the memory uh, yes Reagan you are correct which is why I disconnected chat from it because while I am ridiculously careful about how we use that to make sure that it is never never the input from the user that's actually going to that location it is always highly controlled changes that we make to the memory it is never 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 your actual input i still disconnect because i'm a coward um <laughs> Uh, oh, yes, uh, juxtaposed. Y exactly, yes. So the problem with web forms, um, and, and to be fair, you still can do some great stuff with web forms, but the biggest challenge of it is they tried to make web development work the same way as wind forms, and that meant creating a lot of things that were basically like lies. The concept of having state, while like having you know persisted state through the requests of web development is what created most of the challenges people had with web forms. So... <laughs> Fuel snable. Yeah, we'll we'll see. We I don't know how long it'll take to do. I doubt it'd be that long. Uh Riggin, so it's on uh, it's on GitHub, but I've but this one's actually a private project for now. Um I might open source it. We'll see. This this will be the 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 only project right now that's not open source on this stream. Uh, so how do we want to create this? Do we want to do this as a user control, you think? Let's do this as a user control. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. So that's party member stats. Uh, so why don't we display this as, like, date status or something like that? Maybe make, maybe make a user control for date status? Uh, the code's not actually that complicated. I can show you the memory stuff. We'll see it as we do this, actually. Uh, so user control called date status uh, so this will be our user control um, I don't know what to put on this really um, doo -doo. how big do we want this to be let's make this something something fairly standard like uh, maybe 240 by oh, maybe 360 that might make sense 
So nice, nice long display. And let's toss in some stuff here. We're gonna pin that just so that we can see it while we've got this here. Uh, we're gonna put a label on here so we know who it is. So this is gonna be the label and this is gonna be character name. Text, not label one. Character name. <clears throat> and this needs a name so so we can access it. So first off, you can adjust the text, but you also need to change the name so that we can access this from the code behind. Uh, and this is going to be um, name label for now. All right, uh, let's change the display of that because this needs to look kind of tidily. So let's change up the font. Uh, it will not be that, uh, can I just change, yeah, let's just change everything in a nice window. Um, what do we have? Yeah, we'll use this, uh, that bit, yeah, that looks good, okay. That'll be character name there. Uh, let's check out the code behind. So view the code, and we need to have a property. And this property is going to be a string, and we're gonna call it character name. And it needs a backing field, except I'm gonna get rid of the backing field because we're not really gonna use a backing field. Instead, what we're gonna say is we're gonna wire it to that control. So this is gonna be character name, uh, uh, sorry, it was name label dot text. So we're actually going to store it directly on the label. Instead of storing it in an extra variable, we're going to store it directly on that. And uh, having a major case of nostalgia. Nice! State management as a concept really, really got boosted and improved with Redux. I don't mean using Redux, I mean the discussion around the concept was made more obvious. Yes! Yeah, so um, interestingly, Robert Tables, that is actually one of the reasons why I point people towards using Nota Time. Uh, is not so first off note of time handles time really well um, just changing topic slightly here but related but when you use it it does not just default things it actually makes you think about what you're doing so there are a lot of cases where the 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 new tech that you're using doesn't necessarily you know affect the change as much as it makes you think about the change so it makes you think about the circumstances so that's that's the big idea uh, dock it to top so it looks like a banner. With, um, is that not on? I think that is. I mean, it's not docked, but it's like at the top with a couple of pixels of buffer. Uh, yeah, juxtaposed. Uh, except the funny thing being, I think that's actually his name. <laughs> Maybe it's not. I have no idea. I have no idea. I, I assume his name is Robert. If not, then he's absolutely been lying to me this whole time. And that's just that's just awful. That's just mean stuff. Mean-spirited. All right, now someone is going to, to punch me, except we really are showing, like, labels and data, and I don't mind form data being in this structure, but someone's probably going to, like, try to reach to the stream and strangle me when I put this control on here. Um... Yeah, this one. And I'm going to adjust the sizes later. Please don't kill me for that. Except it really does work nicely for this. Okay, so label one is going to be... Um, uh, total... Uh, Let's see, um, current love, that value works, and then this one will be, um, cheer total. Uh, do we add one to show the rank? I think we do. So let's add a row. And we're going to auto-size these for now. Um, what? Did I, did I click cancel instead of... Hang on. I might have derped that. Uh, no. 
Uh, oh, no, it's there. It's just nothing. Whoops. Absolute 20 pixels for now. That's fine. Once there's an item in there, then it will then it will hold it correctly. All right, and then this last one is uh, current. So rank, place, rank. Okay, uh, so this one is going to have a label to display the rank because you don't get to change this one. This is just the results of I'm going to put in a number sign for now uh, cuz that is, it really is a placeholder. Uh, and then these other ones are going to be uh, text boxes. of some kind. There we go. Okay, uh, what is going on in chat? Um, you had a fun instance the other day where you converted date time to daytime offset and it somehow kind of loses its time zone or kind or something. C sharp could be, uh, yeah, Joe Philly, that is one of the biggest challenges is dealing with time. It's why uh, it's so important that we use node time or something. Uh, it will go full width and scale with the control if docked top. Uh, oh, I, that's, a, that's a very good point, Simon. Uh, but I gave a talk recently, and someone in the audience uh, thought my name was Robert. Uh, my director said the guy present. You mean? <laughs> okay, that that is awesome. Uh, well, there you go. So congratulations. Well, you are Robert Tables now, whether you like it or not. So. Uh, Will, I think I missed your question. I will go check it in a minute. Uh, that's how we used to do it back in the day. Uh, gives nice alignment of labels and values with dock padding and anchors. Yeah, see, Simon, I, it's been so long since I've used WinForms, I don't actually remember how to do most of that, most of those tricks. But, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so if you used your name as, as like, Philly, meaning, you know, Philadelphia... And uh, JW, but yeah, yeah, you'd totally get that. So see, see, that's how that's how it works. You use anything in your name. So uh, where's Will's question? Uh, so what were you inquiring about with Mark? He's on vacation. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Will, um, good. Yeah, I forgot to bring up that question. So uh, the cool thing is, I want to talk to him about helping me out with uh, with some of my overlay stuff. You see the yellow the yellow lines that are going around. Well, I make them, I make them, like, they, they glow and they move around and stuff like that, but I'm hoping that, uh, that he can at least point me in the direction of how I can make him do nicer stuff than this. So, basically, I wanna, I wanna hopefully tie in overlay a lot better than, than what we've got right now. Uh, hopefully make it so that it can be used for more than just our stream, but if not, at least then, you know, we've, we've done a cool thing over here on ours. Um... So you're saying there's some way that I can tell this to dock somewhere. Dock on the top. That does it? Hopefully that does whatever he was trying to tell me to do. It will go full screen if you turn auto size off. Hang on, let me toss the control on this actual thing here. Uh, oh, I said data. I meant date. I totally derped that. Why did I type the wrong word? Let's see how easily this can change. This is going to get ugly. Yeah, let's see if it can do it. Okay, those all renamed, that renamed. 
anymore. That didn't fix. That didn't fix. Okay. Okay, I think we got it. Um, let's see if that fixed. But if you want it top left, leave it auto size. Does anyone know if the various MVP MVVM frameworks for WinForms support using await and async calls? Ooh, I don't know uh, if they do or not. Um, MH 1996 MH, welcome and thank you for that Twitch Prime sub, much appreciated. Welcome to the Dev Chatter Chattosaurus crew. Glad you're here and enjoying the stream. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's been a good one. Now, if anyone else is in here and has not yet uh, subscribed or followed and is interested in, following the stream is the best way to make sure that you get updated when we go live, and subscribing to the stream is the uh, best way to support the stream and make sure that I can continue doing this, although I don't really make money off of this, so... Uh, it's really up to if you want to, and it's cool if you do, because then you get fun stuff. Uh, so you're suggesting that I can dock it somewhere? Would you dock it in the middle like that? Yeah, okay, there you go. Oh, that's cool, that is cool. Uh, well, 111, thank you for that follow as well, much appreciated. For the science! We, we love science here. Good stuff. We actually have a uh, Discord also if anybody is interested. Uh, we, we do have nerdy discussions over there related to other things uh, other than uh, programming, although most of it is programming conversations. Uh, that is getting awfully close to character name there. wonder if I can get some margin on the bottom. There we go. Margined. Yeah, there's some other stuff that we can do with the layout, but hang on one second, because I want to do uh, one other thing with this, and I'm going to reference this control to take a look at how to do it because I don't remember there it is description and category those are the ones I want uh, not this one this one view code character name add attributes description and category which we're gonna say displayed character name yep and category is data that is correct <clears throat> we're gonna build this and then I should be able to put it on the page we can actually look at what it looks like Simon and we'll see how it how it uh, actually displays on here because uh, we have not tried this yet let's put it on here and I think there we go so we need some kind of border background something something on them to separate them because right now they're kind of blurring together and I notice we need scrolling on this uh, as well, so that we can actually see what's down below. Uh, Tomica, which I'm gonna guess on there, and if I butchered that, I apologize, but welcome, thanks for following, much appreciated. Uh, remember spending a good few years of my life making wind forms look pretty as a junior de- Well, there you go, Simon. Yeah, sadly, making, making wind forms pretty is not my specialty. Uh, I doubt it's really anybody here in the channel's specialty. Uh, so this one is Barrett. This one is... What? Did I not save that? Oh, whoops, that's name, not... Uh... Okay. 
uh, we'll say date status, and this is this one is Tifa, and this one is I'm gonna say Eris, and someone's gonna yell at me because I did Eris instead of Aerith. Uh, so looking at that, we didn't get the right amount of space. This is way too big still, so let's shrink this thing. Um, 240 is way too big. We'll try it like that. There you go. Now let's see, did that actually resize in the other place, or do we... We're going to need to resize them, I think. Wish they just inherited this. Which, actually, now that I think about it, if it's actually structuring the way it says it is, I probably could have just resized over here and it would have worked. Okay, these need some kind of border or something around them. Um, something to distinguish them. Which, I guess, is something we can add at some point. <clears throat> Adding a padding row on the bottom of the table layout, and then you can set it to the rows and the heights content. Oh, yeah, that's actually a good idea. We just put a padding row on there. So I'm just going in and... Uh, although, actually, could, couldn't we just add a margin to it? And that would do it, too. Margin on this. Uh, first off, what's a margin of 10 look like on the whole thing? Does it... Oh, it doesn't actually do it. It doesn't margin it. Oh, man. That is... Wow, I didn't think about that. Um... Huh. Well, that's a weird one. Yeah, Simon, nothing nothing quite like this to make us feel old. Yeah, but I think padding is going to put it between the tables instead of, uh, instead of on there like we wanted. So that kind of separates them. Which, actually, now that I think about it, I could have just added the margin here. I bet. But then it won't flow nicely, I don't think. So, either way, uh, I do think that that is now readable, so if we were running this, uh, this page would actually look usable, even though that description piece isn't quite there. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, that totally looks usable. Like, the layout's not perfect, but you can tell what everything is. So, definitely works there. Uh, this list is clearly wrong. These are not what we're gonna... Uh, let's see, um, so this, uh, we, we need to change up the text on those commands to say, say all these different things and a handful of others. Um, yeah, no, uh, Simon, we, we definitely will make some of those changes, uh, but, um, <clears throat> first things first. Uh, okay, good. That actually separated there. All right. Whew. So, uh, what I want to go through here is I want to mention a couple of things. First off, uh, if you're not in our Discord and you're interested in chatting with any of us and you've enjoyed any of the stream, I highly recommend you join our Discord, uh, as that is a place where you can chat with me and the other members of the Dev Chatter community that are here, and uh, there are a bunch of us that hang out over there, so uh, feel free to join over there. And uh, link, obviously, in the chat, as well as down below the stream, in case you can't see the chat one. Uh, aside from this project, everything we work on here on the stream is out on GitHub, and it's at github.com slash devchatter. Link over there. Uh, I also want to tell people we stream four times a week on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And uh, addition, if you do miss a stream and there was something interesting that happened on it that you want to see, you can always find them in the video section here on Twitch or over in YouTube. The video section here on Twitch expires after a little while, so uh, to see the full archives, you do want to head over to YouTube. Link over there in the chat as well as down below. And that actually includes the full archives of all of our stuff going back to the beginning of the stream. And in addition to that, 
Uh, it's actually got everything sorted by playlist and stuff like that, so you can look by which project we were working on at the time. So, quite fun, in case you are so inclined. Uh, additionally, as I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, my name is Brendan, this channel here is Dev Chatter, so that's my name, that's my Twitter. Uh, links are also over there. If you are interested in following me on Twitter, I do post some interesting stuff from time to time. Sometimes it's not dev-related, but most of the time if it's not dev-related, it's related to some other nerdy thing, game, space, something. And, uh, last couple of things. Uh, I do want to make sure that I thank everybody who came out today and hung out with us. Uh, I just checked and I didn't see anyone that we are planning on raiding. Uh, so, uh... I do at least want to make sure I roll the credits and thank everybody that hung out today. So I want to thank Carrie and the Michael Jolly for their biddies and cheering. I want to thank Crimson Green and s &B for hanging out and helping to moderate the channel today. We got a handful of followers uh, who are wonderful people that are listed right here on the stream. I want to thank each and every one of you, as I think I did when you did follow. But thank you for following the stream. Always love having new people. If you haven't clicked the follow button, you absolutely should. Desert Griven, uh, Oh Noah Duck, Paramedic, and MH1996 MH, thank you all for the subscriptions today. One of those was gifted, uh, and uh, I want to make sure that we thank it was uh, Michael Jolly, I think, was the one that gifted that, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, we are a hard to moderate, but <laughs> occasionally fuel snable, occasionally. Uh, I want to thank Will for being an excellent lurker and hanging out, being a fantastic VIP in the chat. I want to thank Simon for that as well. And uh, Simon is like, but wait a minute, I'm not an MVP in chat, but Simon, I think you are. Uh, anyway, um, I want to thank everybody for hanging out today, it was quite fun. Uh, we are going to be streaming again on Monday, and on Monday uh, we are going to be working further on the dev streams project again. Again, that is ASP.NET Core and Vue.js and C Sharp, JavaScript obviously, it's a fun project. We uh, are hopefully going to get that close enough to just go ahead and launch. We are we are pretty close. We only have a handful of things left. Some of them are styling, so hopefully I convince someone to uh, help us out with the styling to make it a little bit nicer than we're going to. But if not, then we're going to have a stream where Brendan's going to hack through some CSS, and uh, that'll be fun. Uh, is it Crimson Green? I thought it was just Crimson. Yeah, it's just Crimson. Uh, there we go. Uh, a couple of other things. If you are in the area and uh, if you're anywhere near me and you're heading to Stir Trek, uh, hopefully I will see you there. If uh, if you are, we are going to be doing some kind of a meetup picture or something like that at some point. So try to find me and find out details about that because we're definitely going to take a picture when we get everybody in person there. Uh, if I can, I'm going to try to do at least a little bit of live streaming from the event. Uh, so hopefully we can get... Uh, uh, we, we had... Um, uh, one of our guests, James, actually stopped by early on in the stream and mentioned that he would actually be... Sh well, actually, he mentioned on Twitter that he would be showing up to the event with a uh, a um, an unlimited data hotspot that uh, I think I might attempt to uh, connect a laptop to and see if we can actually do some live streaming from the event. Uh, we'll see. And, uh... MMC Mahand? Mm, uh... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but either way, welcome, thanks for following, much appreciated, and uh, I'm really glad all of you hung out today, I will see you on Monday for another great stream, and uh, we will talk to you then, enjoy the rest of your weekend, happy coding everyone, and uh, have a great rest of your day, bye.